Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are continuing the Flood Law series, taking a look today at some real odd flood forms. Uh, these are the variants that we saw only in the original Halo Wars, and they've never been seen since, or any time for that matter. So for those who never played it, in addition to the regular combat form variants, infection forms, and carrier forms, a bunch of completely new flood forms were introduced to sort of fit the RTS playstyle. So today we are going to look at those three forms. Now it's worth noting that all three of these forms are combat form variants, and as far as we know, They've only ever been seen on Shield World 0459, which is where most of Halo Wars 1's campaign takes place, and it's also where you encounter the Flood, quite obviously. Now, the Flood outbreak on the Shield World was only in the Feral stage of evolution, and therefore pure forms couldn't be made, so the Proto-Grave Mind and the Flood had to basically deal with combat forms being their most lethal force. Something also to note is that none of them have the infection form protruding from them, unlike the more common combat forms. Now, this could just be because the hosts don't have any suitable locations for the infection form to sort of stick its antenna out, or it could just be that they stay inside the body for better protection. On the other hand, it could be that these forms weren't infected using infection forms, rather using flood spores. And that is possible, and you'll realise why, because we're going to cover why that could be the case later in this video. Now, because these forms are combat forms, the reason that we've likely never seen them before is because they are only infected versions of the wildlife that's found specifically on this shield world. Or maybe they could exist on other shield worlds that we just haven't been to yet. But anyways, let's take a look at them. So the first is the Flood Swarm. Now these are likely infected versions of those colourful little parrot bird things that you can see flying around the maps that are set on the shield world. These are one of the few known aerial combat forms. When these birds get infected by the Flood, they get repurposed, as always, gaining real disgusting offensive capabilities in the form of a deadly ranged attack. They fire what are likely calcium spikes, which is very similar to what the ranged pure form fires. They fire these in large bursts out of their mouths that do moderate damage to infantry and air units. Their bodies also get altered, turning into that really sickly green beige flood colour, and their faces turn a lot more vicious looking. So instead of being cute little parrots, they turn into weird, disgusting bat-like creatures. So if you ever wanted to know what a flood-infected parrot might look like, I can honestly say I've never asked myself that question, but if you did, then I think that this form is the closest to an answer as you're ever gonna get. Next up, we have the Bomber Form, another aerial combat form that seems like a sort of variant of the Carrier Form. These things attack by dropping flood growth pods, those disgusting onion-like pods from Halo 3. They drop them onto the enemy, and then when they hit the floor, they explode and infection forms pop out. Now, these things are combat forms, but we just have no idea what the original host creature was, considering how little wildlife we actually see during Halo Wars. Whatever creature it was, was probably extremely weird looking, given that it has these two creepy little looking arms, like something out of a classic horror movie, with massive claws and a massive mouth that's like stitched together like a scarecrow. I don't know, this form is really fucking weird when you actually sort of look at it in detail. The original creature must have been odd, to say the least. When whatever the host creature is, is infected, it grows a massive abdomen similar to the carrier form, in which they grow the growth pods and also incubate the infection forms. And then, when it attacks, the bottom of the abdomen, no pun intended, <laughs> opens up and it drops out a single growth pod that sort of bounces on the floor and then pops open. So finally we have the Thrasher form, a stronger and more tanky combat form than the rest. These things are likely infected versions of some sort of primate descendant, maybe like a, a space gorilla or something, considering how similar the body shape and movement is to a primate. The creature itself is really bulky and has really thick front limbs. Emerging from the biomass that's grown on its back, arms and legs also are tentacles that are likely used to sense the environment around them or something similar, considering that they 
don't have an infection form that's sticking its antenna out doing that, so I'd assume the tentacles kind of fill that role. Their only form of attack is melee, and they're capable of doing a massive ground slam attack using their front arms. And also to make up for their serious lack of range, they can also run pretty damn fast on all fours. Quite a terrifying thing to see if you see that thing hurtling towards you, tentacles flaying in the air and its massive stubby arms slamming on the floor. I would hate to see that in real life. Okay, so considering this video is pretty short and we've covered all of the combat forms, I thought that we'd cover two other flood forms from Halo Wars that can attack. Now, these forms are really different to anything we've covered so far. They're more like, what's the word, sort of defensive structures than actual flood beings. They aren't sentient per se, more so controlled by the local proto grave mind. These two defences are used to protect flood hives, which produce infection forms and the other general disgusting shit needed to help the flood spread. The first of these is the flood launcher. These things are massive like mounds of flood biomass that fire more biomass at the enemy. They do this by contracting the bottom half of the pod and the pressure from this sort of forces the biomass up and out the top of the pod. Now on occasion they can also fire pieces of biomass like this that turn into a cloud of flood spores when they hit the floor. These flood spores track the enemy and infect them, which is, like I said earlier, likely how the combat forms in this game were infected, considering that there's no infection form that's visible. And finally, we have the Flood Root. Really, <laughs> not that much to say about this one, other than that it takes the Flood's love of tentacles and makes them an actual threat for once. These things defend flood hives by whipping any enemies that come within its range, along with being able to pick up and convert any sentient beings into flood biomass, and then use them to help the hive grow, or hell, maybe even put them in a flood launcher and fire them at the enemy. That's a pretty fucking gruesome thought, having the flood biomass of one of your converted marine brothers being fired back at you. I'm getting Lord of the Rings flashbacks. So, that does it for the Halo Wars Flood Forms. There are some more structures that I could cover, like the Flood Hive, or the Flood Den, or the, like, Flood Porter, I think it's called, but there really isn't that much to say about them, honestly. If there really is enough demand in the comments, then I might make a video about them, but like I said, we really don't know that much about them at all. Next time, we're going to cover the four stages of Flood Evolution, and then after that, we're going to cover a slightly elusive topic, the mythical flood cure. We are going to look at whether a flood cure has ever even been attempted and whether it would actually work or not, and if it would, what it could maybe do to help prevent the flood. Thanks a lot for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.